to church this morning. Welcome to church online, whether you found us on YouTube or on the website. It's great to have you with us this morning. We're going to worship God. It's great to have the worship team back together. So come on, we're going to sing louder. We're going to worship more. We're going to sing better than we have. So wherever you are right now, we're going to raise up a hallelujah, raise up a song of praise. Come on. We sing. Where is a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies? There is a hallelujah out of every unbelief. So where is a
peace like a river wash over us, God. We sing. Peace like a river wash over me. Immerse me in water as deep as the Lord, 
done for us, God. We sing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. The Lord turn it. Sing it again. He is for you. 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 He is for you.
faithful. Come on, you declare it this morning. He is for you. He is for you. He is for you. With one voice, we sing Amen. to this online podcast. Welcome to church. It's so good to be behind a pulpit again, to be behind a lectern again. It's good to be in a normal building again, rather than our living room, dining room, kitchen, whatever you want to call it, hall. It's good to be in a building where we can just worship together and uh, socially distance, join together as church. Give you a massive welcome this morning. Can I just give a big shout out this morning? To all those people who in the last three months have, have stepped up for me and have preached and brought God's word, we've had some outstanding messages. I want to give a big shout out to all those who did that. A big shout out to Dan and to Natalie who, who led worship all the way through lockdown and now have the band together. I'm not quite sure how Natalie reached some of those high notes that she did. On the, I think I need surgery to kind of uh, to do that. But she did absolutely amazing. Both guys that did amazingly well. And it's good to be back in church. Yep, who's glad to be back in church this morning? So for the next four Sundays, we are doing this. We're doing church online from a a proper church building. Um, And then on October the 4th, everybody say October the 4th. 
October the 4th, we are inviting everybody back together to do church again, to relaunch church, to plant church in, um, in the Royal Keys, the Royal Keys Community Centre. Um, we'll give you more information as the weeks go on, but that's, that's the plan. And how many people know that plans always work? Right, they do, don't they? No. We are praying this plan will work, but that's our plan, so keep with us the next four weeks, and um, the end of September, then October the 4th, we're back together again as church, we'll invite you to gather as church. So let's get straight into the Word of God this morning. I want to talk, throughout September, I want to talk on the same subject and then start a new series in, in October, but I want to talk on every Sunday in September on the same thing, and I want to talk about this. The title this morning is this. The title for the next four mornings is this. I want to talk about the best team talk ever. The best team talk ever. It's not mine. Mine will be kind of okay and average and it would be okay. But I want to talk about a team talk that's in the Bible and we're going to read that a little bit later on, which I believe for me and, and, and I see as the best team talk ever. Can I ask a question this morning? Does anybody need a good team talk this morning? I do. Does anybody need something just to stir you up a bit this morning? On this September morning, does anybody just need to know that it's going to be okay? Well, I'm just praying and believing this message is for you. The best team talk ever is for you this morning. Because when the pre-game plan goes out the window, Anybody can identify with that this morning and say amen. Hey, it'd be good to me in the chat this morning. I haven't preached for quite a while, so just send me some love in the chat, okay? Just to, just to get me warmed up a little bit. When the pre-game plan goes out the window, anybody's pre-game plan for 2020 just went out the window, when what you planned didn't happen, when you anticipated but didn't turn out the way that you thought, when what you forecast or what you predicted turned out just to be wrong. You see, you forecast a sunny 2020 and it rained and rained and rained. When what you expected disappointed. When, when your weight, W-A-I-T, not W-E-I-G-H-T, when your weight has been extended. I know some of you this morning have had some weight extended in a different kind of way. And, and how many people are going to join a fitness plan before October the 4th? And when we all get back together, people will say to you, you look exactly the same, you look any difference. And you've worked for four weeks to solidly. When your weight has been extended, when plans and dreams are delayed, you know, when you are overwhelmed, how many people in this season and at the moment in time have been, have been overwhelmed? I know there are people this morning who have been overwhelmed. When you've been overwhelmed by disappointments, when, 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 when you've be, you been overwhelmed by the strength of opposition against you, by the, by the ferocity of the attack, the ferocity of the attack that you've come under, has, has somehow overwhelmed you, but by the power of the storm, when the weight of what you are carrying, come on, who am I talking to this morning? When the weight of what you are carrying is just too much to bear, there are people this morning who are carrying stuff, and, and you're finding it's, it's too much to bear. When, when it's time to go back out on the field, when you've got COVID-19 information overload, it's coming from everywhere. When, when lockdown, how many people are like this this morning? When lockdown has left you more Eeyore than Tigger. <laughs> it's knocked the Tigger out of you. <laughs> and this morning, all you've got is Eeyore, and, and, and you've got lack of energy, and you've got lack of enthusiasm, and you've got, you've got lack of... Of, of when your va-va-voom has got up and gone. How many people am I talking to this morning who've lost their va-va-voom just because of what we've been through and what you've been through and the storm and the attack and the valleys and the discouragement that you've had. When, when, when the encouraging needs encouraging, 
Come on, come on, somebody. Going back to school for some of you. Going back to work for some of you. Going back to church for all of us. I said, for all of us. <laughs> I said, for all of us. Going back to church. Going back to normal. When, when we are planting again. I don't know how many times. I, I've lost count of how many times this church, Edge Church, has planted and replanted. <laughs> And reformed. Well, well, here we go again. We are, we are planting again. You see, when all those things happen in your life, when you're being overwhelmed and when you're being disappointed and when you're being drained and when, you, when you're being brought down and when you face the attack of the enemy, here's the point this morning. It's the halftime team talk. Or as the Premier League finished last season, it's the drinks break talk. The Premier League last season brought in this brilliant idea of, of the drinks break because it was going to be too warm and it turned out to rain almost every single game. And it was cold, but it still brought in the drinks break. And, and the drinks break was a great, uh, you know, the idea was to keep the players hydrated so they wouldn't get dehydrated and become susceptible to the virus and to illness. So they had this great idea, let's, let's stop the game halfway through the, the second half and let's have, a, let's have a drinks break. But actually what it was, it was a chance for a team talk. <laughs> because, because sometimes the teams were flagging in the second half that, that some of them weren't quite fit and they hadn't played for so long. So it was a great chance. How many people this morning need a drinks break? <laughs> Come on, you, be, you, you are worn out and you are tired and you are, you are weary and you're scared and you're frightened because of going back to work and going back to, to school and going back to normal and going back among crowds again. How many people can remember empty roads when you were the only person on the road going, going, to, going to where you were going, going to your, in, 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 what, what did I used to call it, necessary shopping or was it your... Um, um, Essential, your essential shopping and your essential exercise. And you were the only one. There was nobody else. There was no non-essential journeys. How many people this morning, are, you're just overwhelmed, you just need a drinks break talk. You need a half-time talk. You see, it's the half-time talk, number one this morning, the half-time talk. I'll get to reading the scripture in a minute. It's the half-time talk. It's the drinks break talk. It's the pep talk. It's the team talk. Number one, that can change the game. Because there are so many teams that we've watched who, who, who in the second half have been dragging behind and have been tired and have been up against it and being defeated. But, but they come out the second half a different team. And I am praying. And we are believing as a church and believing as leadership that when you come out for the second half in October, that it will change your game this year. It will change your year this year. We need to change the game this year. It's a, it's a, it's a drinks break, slum number one, that can change the game, that can bring around a turnaround. How many people this morning, either you need a turnaround in your life or you, you know some people this morning who need a turnaround. Things haven't gone great. Haven't, haven't handled things well. Haven't, haven't coped with the pressure and haven't coped with this unseasonal change that we've all been through and all, all, the, all the stuff that's been thrown against us and haven't coped with working from home or haven't coped with self-isolation, haven't coped with quarantine. And, and what we need, what we need is a halftime talk. It's a drinks break that can bring around a turnaround. God can bring around a turnaround in your life this morning. He, 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 can, he can bring a turnaround from this moment on. Number two this morning, it's a halftime talk. It's a team talk that can, be, can, that can produce hope out of the lowest despair. There are people this morning, maybe you are watching us and maybe you are or you know somebody this morning who is in the lowest despair. There are a low points in their year. There are a low points in their life. And, and, and I believe this morning, it's the team talk. It's the drinks break talk that can, that can produce hope out of the lowest 
despair. God can bring hope into people's lives in their lowest despair, at their lowest point. <clears throat> it's often at people's lowest point that God can reach them. It's people's lowest point where, where, where they become open to God and open to God moving in their lives. And I wonder how many people this morning, either you yourself or you know somebody this morning who, who has been at their lowest point. They've been brought low, they've been brought down. And this morning, the good news of the gospel, the good news of Jesus, is that he can produce hope. He, he can produce a lifeline. He can produce hope out of the lowest despair, the lowest points. Number three, it's a half-time talk that can lift a team that is on their knees. And I don't know how our teams in church is doing this morning. You guys are doing great today. The worship team have done great. But it, it may be this morning that, that, that a team can be on their knees. It can lift a team that is tired. It's a halftime talk that can lift a team when, when they're down. Lift, lift a team when they are disappointed. Lift a team when they are scared. Lift a team that has been bruised and been hurt. And we want to help people this morning by, by these podcasts, by these messages, by this worship that can, that, that can lift somebody this morning who has been hurt and who has been bruised and who, who has been scarred so deeply. It, it can lift a team that is nervous. How many people this morning are nervous about going back to church, nervous about going back to work, nervous about going back to school, nervous about going back to the hall and having to, to stand face to face with people and, and, and social distancing is, 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 is limited and, and you're scared this morning. And you know, it's a genuine thing that, that people are frightened and people are scared. I'm believing and we are believing that these podcasts and these messages, that there is a message in this. It's the halftime talk that can really help someone. This is your halftime talk this morning. This is your halftime talk to help people who are nervous, to help people who are frightened, to help people who are bruised, and to help people who are hurting, to help people who are tired, to help people who are, who are down, to help people who are being brought low. It's, it's our belief this morning, this halftime talk, that what I'm going to read from the Bible this morning in a few moments can, can, can really make the difference in your life, make the difference in your month, make the difference in your year. And number four, it's the halftime talk. And I love this. We have seen this happen so many times at football matches, not with our team, but with other teams. That can and we watch it on TV so many times. It's the halftime talk that can produce a win out of defeat. I wonder how many people this morning... And you know somebody who is just being defeated. And you feel defeated this morning. You feel like your prayer isn't being answered. You feel like that when you worship, it's so hard. You find it so hard to worship because you're on your own. You, you, you're missing the, the, the community that is church. You know, church is so much more than just sitting together and singing songs or sitting together listening to a message. Church is community. We, we need church. We need each other. We encourage each other. We bounce off each other. We learn from each other. Iron sharpens iron. And church is a community. And you're, and you're missing that community this morning. And you feel like you're living in defeat. You feel like everything is getting on top. Well, it's a halftime talk this morning that can produce a win. Out of defeat to, to so many people this morning. 2020, it just looks like a defeat. 2020 this year looks like it's a year of defeat. Well, I'm telling you this morning, church, and we are believing this morning, and we are, we, are, we are combining our worship and the word together to encourage you this morning that God can bring a win out of what looks like a defeat. How many people just put some applause and put some praise and put some worship and put some hallelujahs in the chat this morning because you believe we believe and you believe that God can bring a win out of a defeat. What looks like a defeat, God can produce a win. This is the halftime talk that will produce a comeback in your life. We are believing that. Let, let, let's get to it. 
before we finish. And I wanna, I'm going to read from Psalm, Psalm 20 and the first six verses from the message this morning. But before I do, let, let, me, let me kind of lay the foundation. Let me, let me just lay the ground this morning of what this psalm is all about. You see, Psalm, psalm 20 is about David sending his armies into battle again. It, it seemed like, if, if ever you read the Psalms or ever, ever read Kings or ever read Chronicles about David, it seems like his people were always at war when David was king. It's, it's, it's quite, quite strange that from the moment David became king, his people faced war after war after war. It felt like they were always going into battle again. How many people, come on, Feel like that this morning. Yeah, you come on, you, I, I see you. You feel like you're always going into battle. You're always battling something. And you just pray for a season of peace. You, you, you pray for a season of calm. You, 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 you say things like, oh, I wish, I wish everything could just be normal. I wish I could be like those people who, who never seem to to have anything to battle. I wish I could be like those people who never seem to have anything to fight. And, and some people feel like that this morning. That it seems like, come on, it's battle after battle, yeah? But there's never a time when you can just sit back on your easy chair and put your feet up and just rest and, and just enjoy. It seems like, it seems like there's battle after battle. That's how God's people were under David. Always under attack always seem to be defending God's land and God's people. Always, always on the back foot. Always having to come back and always having to face an enemy. Always having to fight to move forward. Come on, who is like that this morning? Everything's a fight. Have you had a month like that? Have you had a week like that? Have you had a year like that? Have you had a life like that? But it always seems like for every, for every step forward, you've got, to, you, you, you've got to have a fight and you've got to have a battle. We, we've got a church like that. <laughs> it seems like we've got to fight for everything. It seems like nothing ever comes easy. We've got to fight. And we've got to fight and we've got to pray and we've got to believe for every soul that comes into church. Because the enemy wants to destroy and steal and, and, and kill and, and kill dreams and kill vision. And like we as a church always seem to be fighting for people and praying for people and believing for every soul that comes in. One battle after another. Who, who is living like that? Who's had a season like that? One battle after another. The feeling of it's kind of like how I feel and how we feel as leadership and church this morning. The, the feeling of, might be how you feel, the feeling of, here we go again. Come on, come on somebody. Put that in the chat. Here we go again. Here we go again. Planting again. Figuring out where are all the wires going to go again? <laughs> Working out, have we got enough sockets again? Working out, how are we going to seat people so they socially distance? Well, at least you won't fight if you socially distance. That's, that's right, isn't it? There'll be no scraps in church because you'll all be, there'll be two people there and three at the back. And the people you don't like, you can... You can not in our church. I'm talking about other churches here. But you know, you know that feeling. Does anybody feel like that? Uh, you know, we certainly feel like that. Before, before I got up to preach, just to record this message, I just had this feeling of, well, after three months, here we go again. <laughs> here we go. More worry, more stress. More sleepless nights, more waking up at 3 a.m. with a message and a word 
and rising north down at 3.30 in the morning. Here we go again. And God's people felt like that under David. Here we go again with the culture of, and I love this culture, I believe this culture is in us as, as leaders and as church, this culture of, here we go again with, we need to go again. We need to go again. If things are going to ever change, we need to go again. We were talking in the car about, about how easy church has been, well, for most people, during lockdown. <laughs> Come on, how easy has it been for you guys sitting at home in your pajamas and your dressing gown and your slippers and your boxes? The guys not pointing any fingers, but in your boxes, with your feet up, with your mug of tea or mug of coffee, and sitting back and watching the TV. And all oh, this is church. This is good, this, isn't it? I like this church. <laughs> well, guess what? October the 4th, we're going to change all of that. You'll be up at 7.30. You'll be, you'll be sweating again. Come on. We just, we just said, how easy has it been for most people? I mean, it hasn't been easy for those people leading worship. It hasn't been easy for people recording preachers and, and singing and music. It's been hard, but come on, for most people. But we need to go again. We need to plant again. And we're excited about this. We're not dreading it. And we're not fearing it. We, we need to plant again. We need to go again. And so God's people were like this. Getting all the swords ready and getting all the armor ready and getting the horses ready and getting, and getting the team ready. To get behind David, the leader, and to say, right, here we go again because we need to go again. They needed a team to... Spurgeon described what I'm going to read right now as we finish. 22 minutes and the first scripture of the morning. How, how bad is this? I'm out of practice. Don't hit me on the chat. Right? Three months not preaching. But I'm going to get to it right now. But Charles Spurgeon described what I'm going to read now as a national anthem. He, he said this, this was a national, Psalm 20 was a national anthem anthem to be sung at the beginning of every battle with hands on their chests singing loud and singing proud so I'm going to read to you now what, what I believe is and what I see in the Bible as <clears throat> the best team talk ever are you with me? So if you've got a Bible at home or whatever you watch your Bible on, read your Bible on. Psalm 20, verses 1 to 6, in the message. So first of all, David begins praying, which is always a good idea if you're going into battle, right? You never want to go into battle with anything without praying first. It's the first choice. It's the first option. So David brings all their minds and all their hearts into one, and he, he begins praying. He says, God answer you. On the day you crash, the name God of Jacob puts you out of harm's reach. Then he prays, God, he says, send reinforcements. How many people need help this morning? How many people need the cavalry to come into your life? How many people just need some angels to come and provide you with something this morning? How many people need some help this morning? He says, send reinforcements from Holy Hill. God, will you send us some reinforcements this morning? Send this church reinforcements. Send people out there this morning who are crying this morning, who are worried this morning. Send them reinforcements from Holy Hill. Send them angels. Send them people. Send them friends. He says, God dispatched from Zion fresh supplies. Exclaim over your offerings. He says, celebrate your sacrifices. He says, give you what your heart desires and accomplish 
your plans. Can anybody say amen to that prayer this morning? That's not even the team talk. That's the prayer before the team talk. Amen, amen, and amen. Here's the team talk. He says, when you win. Now, come on, somebody. Put some prayers in the chat this morning. He says, when you win, not if you win, or you might win. He says, listen, people. Listen, teams. Listen, army. Listen, church. Listen, believer, this morning who's looking at defeat. He says, when you win. Oh, man, he says, we plan to raise the roof. Lead the people. Lead the parade with our banners. Then he turns all Disney. And Cinderella's castle. And he says, may all your wishes come true. Oh, man, that is such a declaration. Whatever you're wishing for this morning. Whatever you're desiring this morning, whatever you're praying for this morning, whatever you're believing for, that miracle that people need, that healing that people need, that finance that people need, whatever you need this morning, what are you wishing for? What are you praying for? What are you believing for? What are you crying for? What are you pleading for? What keeps you awake at night that you want God to do for you so desperately? He says, may all your wishes come true. Amen to that this morning. What a team talk. Yeah. Haven't even finished. Verse 6. One more verse. I can almost see David in front of his armies. Kind of with his arms folded. And he kind of leans against the wall. And he, see, he just says, well, that clinches it the scripture he says well that clinches it he said help's coming an answer's on the way start the coffee machine he says man he says what are you worrying about he says everything's gonna work out that to me has to be the best team talk ever everything's gonna work out isn't that what Romans 8 28 says to somebody this morning everything's gonna work out it looks like this year has been a year of defeat it looks like dreams have crashed it looks like disappointment reigns it looks like the enemy is ruling it looks like the enemy's having a victory parade. It looks like, looks like the devil this morning is on the run and is rampant. But David says to his army, listen, listen, guys. Whatever you're facing right now, everything is going to work out. I don't even think he shouts it. I think he just like leans against the wall. Picks his guitar up. He just says, oh, man, guys, come on. Like, like, I'm going to say, yes, this. come on, guys, listen. Everything's going to work out. Just be cool. Have a latte. Play some music. Play some Adele. Or Hillsong. <clears throat> he just says, listen, guys. When you go into battle this morning, <clears throat> when you're fearful, when you go back to work, when you go back to school, when you go back to normal, when you, when you come back to church, whatever you're facing, everything is going to work out. Come on, tell somebody this morning, everything, and I mean everything, David said, is going to work out. When you're facing the enemy down, when you're confronting your attacker, when you are at a standoff with your giant, when you are overwhelmed by the storm, when you are overcome with the worry that haunts you day and night, when you worship, but you're worshiping in pain, you're worshiping with a broken heart, 
You're worshipping with broken dreams, like some people are doing this morning. You're, you're worshipping with a broken vision. You're worshipping with a fractured relationship. You're worshipping with a broken marriage. You're worshipping, worshipping with a broken family. Whatever we are facing, whenever we have to go again, when you win, David says. Come on, somebody, this morning. It's when you win. Let me finish. Is this all okay for somebody? If it's not for you, tell the person that you know this morning who's in need, who's on their knees, that this message is for them, that when you win. In World War II, I don't know if people realize this from, from modern history. In World War II, Winston Churchill led through 51 9-11s. We all witnessed 9-11 in 2001. We witnessed the horror. Winston Churchill led the country through 51 9-11s. 51 of the devastation that 9-11 brought. 51 of the loss of life. 51 of the bombings. And history relates that every day after bombing, after the bombings every day, he would get out of his bunker where he with other cabinet members had to go. And, and the newspapers caught him as he would walk among the rubble. And he would walk among the ruins. And he would walk, uh, walk among the wreckage of London that had just been bombed. And smoke would still be rising from the ashes. He'd be surrounded by, by blood and devastation and by people weeping as, as, as the ashes were still burning, as fires were still burning. He would walk among them. And with his famous cigar in hand, he would face the cameras and give his famous V signal, V for victory. And he would say this. He would say every time, he would say, we got hit last night, but we are still standing. And he would stand loud and proud. He said, we took a huge blow last night, but we are still standing. And he said this, quote, he said, courage is facing failure after failure, attack after attack, disappointment after disappointment without losing your enthusiasm. He said, that's what courage is. Failure after failure. Who am I talking to this morning that needs encouraging because you keep failing? How many people this morning, disappointment after disappointment, and you need some courage this morning. Attack after attack, and you need some encouragement to tell you it's going to be all right. Courage. Come on, somebody. I want to encourage you as we finish right now before we pray. It's facing those things. You can face those things without losing your enthusiasm. We as a church have been hit so many times. We've been thrown out of buildings. We've been locked out of buildings. We've been locked down out of buildings. We've had disappointments. But I've got to tell Edge Church, this is for Edge Church, listen to me this morning, Edge, Edge Church, before we get, to be, get together on October the 4th, listen to me, we are still standing. Yeah. We are still Edge Church. We are still God's church. Jesus is still building his church. We know why, because we're being, we encourage each other. And we haven't lost our enthusiasm this morning. We're still on fire. Let me encourage you this morning. Whoever needs this, to lose your enthusiasm. Father, bless your people. Whoever needs this message, I know there are many people this morning who need this message, who are walking among ruins, who are walking among fires that are still burning in their lives, fires of disappointment, fires of attack, fires of pain, fires of fear, fires of worry, 
And Father, we as a church pray for those people, whoever they are this morning with heads bowed and with perhaps tears coming out of their eyes and flowing this morning. We pray for them and we encourage them and we give them the best team talk ever. That the second half will be better than the first half. That victory will come out of defeat. That a win will come out of a loss. And we pray this morning for every person. In Jesus' name, bless them, encourage them, inspire them. Never let them lose their enthusiasm. In Jesus' name. And everybody on the chat said amen and amen and amen and amen. Have a great day. And we'll see you next Sunday. God bless you.